Hi, welcome to the quick starter for the Smith Mora course. I am really excited to show you some of the lines here. And it's my hope that after you go through this chapter, you are well equipped to handle most of Black's critical tries and you have a feel and idea for how the course is structured. The lines here are ones that I would expect you to encounter in most of your games. At least they are ones that I consider critical. And uh, there are a mix of uh, lines. The most uh, testing ones are ones where Black takes on C3, but there are others as well where he refuses the gambit. So we'll take a look at it one by one, starting from all the declined uh, portions and then moving on to the accepted. So after e4, c5, d4 takes c3. Black has a certain choice. I have checked a lot of moves in the course and I'm going to give you a brief overview of each one. To start with, the Alapin with uh, knight f6 is uh, one of the most critical tries, especially if black doesn't want to take the pawn on c3. Here I recommend to go for this system with e5, knight d5 and c takes d4, deviating from what Johann Sebastian gives in his course. I give a detailed explanation about why I choose this line in the introduction chapter, so I suggest you refer to that if you need to understand my reasoning. Here though I just want to quickly check all the lines. So for example here black has a certain split. If uh, knight c6 it's uh, not a bad move, but I think white can uh, try to get some advantage. For example, after knight c3, black has to take. And following d6, we have the very strong sequence f4. And after d5, d5, uh, sacrificing a pawn, knight b8, knight f3. Uh, note how black's entire army is stuck on the last rank. This gives us very good play, and I think uh, white has a clear advantage here. So fifth more alternatives, black also has b6 here, but it's just a very bad way to read some of the e6, b6 systems. Bishop c4 forces black to play e6. I also check bishop b7 in the course, where white is clearly better. After e6, we take and uh, develop normally with knight c3. After knight c6, knight f3, black has to strike with d6. Here we play bishop g5, exchanging off our nominally bad bishop and removing black's bishop pair from the board. Following bishop e7 takes takes, h3 is a very important move to prevent the bishop from occupying the g4 square. After knight g6, castle castle, rook e1, black center is a big target and uh, his pieces don't really make too much sense, so white is at least slightly better. Uh, instead black can try e6 here and after uh, knight f3 he has a certain choice. d6 we will check via the 5d6 move order. Uh, and b6 here is just uh, not really a great move, even though there is a correspondence game here. After knight c3, uh, black is forced to take and go queen c7. We go bishop d2, protecting the pawn. And in general, this structure is very, very favorable for white because we can quickly launch a wing attack. For example, in the quick starter here, I give bishop uh, b7. And following a4, uh, bishop e7, a5, we sacrifice a pawn, but following b takes a5. We go bishop d3 and after short castle and rook e1, we have a fantastic attacking position here. The pawn on e5 is a very, very strong pawn and the black has to be really careful not to get completely run over by something like h4 and knight g5. So e6 and b6, uh, not really a critical setup against the Alapin. Instead, uh, black can try d6, which is uh, considered the critical move against the Alapin. We go knight f3. Now there's a certain split. Uh, e6 was given by Hari in his course. Uh, here I think I give very few lines uh, after bishop c4. Uh, bishop e7 is Hari's line, but let's just quickly check knight b6 first. After uh, bishop d3, white is just slightly better. There are a lot of games in knight b6, but uh, I think you just need to know the following line to get a decent advantage. Knight c6, we castle. After knight b4, we play the important move, bishop e4, forcing d5, following which we return. And once black takes, uh, we have the very strong center. Uh, black is left with a very bad light squared bishop. Even though it's unopposed, it's not really a great piece. We quickly develop with knight c3 and uh, bishop f4. We might consider pushing on the queen side. We might consider pushing on the king side. And uh, overall, I think black is just uh, struggling to equalize here. So instead of uh, knight b6, Hare Krishna's choice is probably better. He goes bishop e7. We castle and play queen e2. Uh, now Hari gives b6, which is probably the most combative line. We go rook d1. And following bishop b7, we take. 
Hari also considers this quite critical. Uh, he recommends taking the E pawn, and after knight c3, knight a6. So far, we have followed Hari Krishna's lifetime repertoire time enough. Here, I propose a strong improvement, bishop e3, which Hari hasn't considered in the course. The point is after knight c7, improving the a6 knight. I consider other moves as well in the main chapter of the course, but in the quick starter, I think this should suffice. Uh, after knight c7, we just play h3, a simple improving move, and following rook c8, queen d3, uh, for example, knight e6, uh, we play knight b5, trying to fight for control over the d4 square. Black can take and go bishop c5, but now we just bring the knight back. We have a very strong blockade on the d4 square. Uh, black's two bishops are not really very useful. And white can slowly think about exchanging one pair of knights and uh, trying to start a kingside attack with the f4 and g4. White has uh, seriously good chances here for an opening advantage and probably has the more pleasant position. So this is uh, Hare Krishna's line, not really something uh, you should be worried about. Instead, uh, knight c6 has been given by Anish Giri and uh, Sam Shankland uh, in their lifetime repertoires. So I did check this very seriously. Now we go bishop c4, and there is again a certain split. Uh, US champion Sam Shanklin gives d takes e5 in his course, and while he does consider uh, 8 d takes e5 and considers it fine for black, and I agree, I instead propose uh, the improvement knight takes e5, which uh, Shanklin doesn't consider in his course. Uh, 